One of the underestimated challenges of rocket science is the development of computer hardware that will be able to survive the hostility of space. But without it, you're faced with a highly explosive rocket without a brain. As ruggedized computers aren't exactly easy to come by, Bo Brandstrup set out to design and build the new CS Duino. We had a little chat with him about his considerations during that process. Well, each part of, of the rocket will have uh, a need for a computer to, to govern the functions of, of each part. Uh, the motor will need a computer, the booster guidance system will need a computer, and uh, the payload or the capsule uh, will need a computer to uh, govern its functions. And so instead of uh, each department uh, developing their own specialized computer, we have uh, decided to have a, a more generalized computer that can be uh, adapted to each use. Uh, so the motor can incorporate the sensors and the interfaces that they need, and uh, the guidance can incorporate other interfaces, other functions um, for their need. And um, uh, likewise with the, the payload or, or the capsule, they implement their, uh, their functions. Uh, to, to, to the computer that, that, that they use. Uh, so hardware-wise, uh, we will uh, be able to use uh, to, to modify the computer for each use and then build upon it with uh, different softwares. The computer we have uh, developed has uh, a, a more or less standard uh, basic core uh, with a processor and, and its uh, housekeeping uh, components around it. Uh, but we have uh, incorporated a lot of uh, serial communication interfaces, uh, which is uh, dictated by the need for, for each um, component, each um, part of the rocket to communicate with the other parts of the rockets. The motor has to to be able to tell the guidance system uh, what the pressures are and, and so on. So, so the, the need for for all these interfaces have uh, uh, isn't uh, readily available uh, as a commercial off-the-shelf component, so we have to incorporate that in, in our own design. And likewise, the large amount of different sensors that we, we use in our systems uh, also have, uh, have uh, made it almost impossible to find a, a, cost a commercial off-the-shelf uh, solution. Uh, another um, uh, reason to, to, to do our own design. The computer design is uh, based on the Arduino platform. The, uh, at the time that I did the design was the largest uh, Arduino called the Duo. Uh, but um, as, as the Duo, the original one is mechanically not suited for, for our purpose. Uh, we have, um, of course, um, maintained this, most of the core schematics, but. Uh, have mechanically made it more ruggedized and robust to, to handle our use. And also we have uh, incorporated a lot of the, the circuits that you would uh, usually have to add on a separate circuit board uh, and connect with uh, discrete wires. We have uh, incorporated those on, on, on the circuit board uh, to, to make a more generalized and and multi-purpose uh, computer platform for, for our use. Uh, although we have uh, incorporated a lot of the interface circuits that we uh, plan to use, uh, then we will, for each uh, specific function in the rocket, we will have also specific interface circuits that uh, will have to be added uh, on a s separate circuit board uh, for instance, the computer meant for the motor will have a lot of pressure sensors and we have to install the, the interfaces for, for these sensors. 
uh, whereas the computer meant for the payload will uh, instead of uh, have a lot of pressure sensors will have a lot of temperature sensors and uh, that calls for another set of interfaces which uh, will then have to be incorporated on on a separate circuit board which is of course not not the same as as uh, the circuit board that we use on the, on the motor uh, computer <laughs> One of the main objectives we have uh, in designing our own computer is that uh, we need a more ruggedized mechanical design uh, due to the um, vibrations and pressures that we experience in a rocket. One of the things that you, we will um, uh, experience when, when uh, the vehicle is uh, leaving the atmosphere is uh, uh, a lot of uh, cosmic radiation. Uh, it's expected to be that, that the, the electronics will be hit several times a second by high energy particles uh, that can uh, upset uh, the electronics and, uh, and cause uh, un unwanted uh, states in, in, in logic. And so we have been um, uh, forced to, uh, to incorporate uh, circuitry in, in the power supply and, and also in the, in, in the uh, memory circuits that uh, are able to uh, not, not only survive but also uh, correct the, the faults that will uh, occur uh, every time such a, uh, an upset will, uh, will take place. One thing that often occurs when, when such an upsetting event uh, occurs is that the current consumption of the computer suddenly rises and by detecting this current consumption, consumption we uh, by monitoring the current consumption, we can then turn off the computer and uh, make it boot again uh, in a in a safe way. And uh, by using a incorporating a lot of non-volatile memory, it's possible for the software guys to uh, to uh, store all the system uh, variables in uh, non-volatile memory and and in that way get get the system up and going again. Uh, in uh, very quickly so that uh, uh, the communication with the rest of the, the systems uh, on board the rocket is uh, is established uh, again as soon as possible. Uh, a lot of the components that have been chosen to uh, to be we have chosen to use in in, this, in uh, the construction uh, could easily be considered slow and old-fashioned and heavy. Uh, because the, they are the, the bipolar uh, type uh, in, in, in contrast to, to the more modern components uh, that almost anybody else uses, which are smaller and faster and uh, uh, also often uh, cheaper. But uh, these uh, modern uh, MOSFET-based components are um, more sensitive to, to cosmic radiation and uh, that's the reason why we have uh, chosen not to use them uh, even though we could probably uh, make a more compact design uh, by using them but uh, that, that has, uh, that's one of the choices that we have uh, made. Uh, one other con uh, consideration in the design has been uh, the fact that we are probably exposing the electronics to vacuum or near vacuum and uh, that has made uh, some types of components for instance electrolytic capacitors uh, and ogo in, in, in the design and we have chosen for capacitors uh, tantalum instead uh, to to be able to to survive this this condition uh, that's not a, a condition I have designed for before so I'm a bit excited about uh, how this will go And then on August uh, 16th, uh, the test went all but nominal. Uh, the engine caught fire and uh, the engine controller didn't survive, like in, uh, everything else didn't survive that. So uh, we just had to, to take the parts in, into the workshop again and, and see what was left of it. After we got the engine and the rocket back to the workshop, we 
we uh, got the engine controller out of the motor compartment and and took it apart to see what was left inside. We could see that the end of the box where we had um, all our waterproof connectors, which was made of plastic, uh, that's where the fire entered and and did the most damage to to the innards of of the of the control box. The other end of the box where the cables entered through missile glands, cable glands. Uh, there was not at all uh, the same amount of damage, so um, that was uh, a relief to see that 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 did work uh, okay. Both the boards uh, inside the box, the interface board, which was more or less homemade, and the computer board, which uh, was made by Printline, uh, were were more or less destroyed, uh, at least uh, unusable in, in all respects. Uh, we did, however, manage to um, uh, get the flash memory off the, uh, the processor board, and afterwards we mounted it on, a, on another computer board and, and were able to, to read out the data, that um, the high-speed data that were recorded during the, the engine test. The static test proved once again that it's difficult to envision and prepare for all the possible risk scenarios you might encounter when your aim is to get into space. Although the CS Duino was developed to withstand the major challenges of vibrations, pressure variations, vacuum and cosmic radiation, a major fire on the test stand hadn't been taken into consideration. That is, until now of course. But one thing is for sure. When the next space-bound rocket, Spica, is launched into space, it will be with a new and fireproof CS Duino brain guiding its every movement. Mm -hmm.